guys welcome back to the channel uh, today we're going to be looking at creating a sort of breakbeat style um, inspired by the opening track on the Fred again's boiler room set uh, which came out very recently uh, there's quite a lot to go over in the project um, so feel free to use the chapters at the bottom of the video just to skip to what you're most interested in um, none of the sounds are particularly complex and the, the structure of the track is also straightforward um, so please feel free to, to follow along whatever DAW you use. So let's dive into the project and see what's going on. So we'll start by looking at the drums at the top of the project here. So we're sitting at 132 BPM, uh, which is pretty standard for a lot of breakbeat. And that's the kind of rhythm that we're going for here. So pretty straightforward in terms of the, the drum and snare. And I've just got a few uh, fills here kind of making up the groove. So we've got two samples. This is for the higher transients of the kick. So used a high pass filter to take out loads of the low end. And this is the main thumpier one here, which is just kind of tuned up with the volume envelope nice and low and thuddy and then just a, a typical sort of breakbeat 
drum and bass kind of snare, loads of high end. Quite a bit of reverb on that, and then just layered that up with this punchier one. And then these two here kind of sit lower in the mix. So this beat here again. And most of the heavy lifting is done by the shakers. Uh, so I've got this sample here, which started off as a loop. And I really just used the first two notes. And as you can see, I uh, chopped them up. Um, so the track is in swing. Uh, so that's about 39% here. And as you can see, these samples here, I manually dragged them uh, off the grid a bit and that just gives it like the, the manual swing. So that's the sample as it was. And that's the, uh, the edited groove. Cool. So on top of that, I've got these ones here. And a bit of layering going on there. So I've got these hi-hats here. Uh, this one here is actually a snare, I think a 808. And took away the attack. So it's a lot softer, sounds a bit like a shaker. And then these two here. So this is the rhythm. Layered up with these. And then the beat as a whole. Cool. And just one more layer on top of that. I had this uh, vinyl crackle sort of running beneath the whole sample. And then blended that in with the original beat uh, just to give it more of like a, a sampled quality as if the, the groove itself was taken from another track, uh, which is pretty common in a lot of breakbeat and uh, drum and bass. Uh, that's just, uh, yeah, kind of emulate that. Now this beat here, which is uh, appears at the intro of the track over, over there. That's exactly the same beat, so I just consolidated that into one audio file. I uh, ran it through uh, some tape emulation just to give it uh, a bit of distortion and then added some EQ a Convolver with a locker room preset, which is this one here give it loads of space and then filter to bring it in and out And in the intro of the song, you'll hear these kind of distorted uh, bits here. And to do that, um, I just played this uh, sample here, ran that into uh, a delay. So if you take the level all the way down, so it's only going to repeat once, basically. I uh, took the dry all the way down, so it's just the wet signal we're going, and then just fucked around with the, the time. And then recorded that in, and ended up with this. And then just use that as a basis, drag that in and kind of chopped up and move it around until it sort of went in with the beat. So you can hear in a couple of places. Cool. And that's pretty much it for those drums there. Um, also had these impacts going on. So they come in every sort of four bars or whatever.
So here we've just got a reverse crash. And then I think this is the same sample, just pitched a bit different. So 909. Then this one here. Another noise splash, which is basically just white noise. And then crowd cheer. So all together. And those drum hits go hand in hand uh, with these short little vocal samples. So we've got a uh, vocal reverse. And this creates like a really big impact either in the transitions of the song or just every four bars where you kind of want like a big hit. Um, and that's pretty much it for the drums. So I'll just play that one bit. Cool. In terms of the processing, um, you'll find if you open the project, uh, most of the drums are kept pretty dry. They're all transparent to the original samples that I used. Um, I mainly just added uh, some reverbs here and there just to give them a bit extra space and uh, EQ, a lot of subtractive EQ just to take out the frequencies I didn't want, mainly in the low end. And um, I had all the drums minus the, the low kick running into a group here. And then I uh, just added some compression. So that sets a medium threshold taken down quite a bit. So it's affecting a lot of the beat, a uh, ratio of three to one, and that's the makeup gain. And that's just to uh, glue the, the drum sounds together along with the vinyl. Um, also had this drum reverb here, and that was set to uh, chamber smooth. So just use that as an auxiliary uh, by taking away all the dry and then just send in uh, some of the, the signal to that drum reverb just so there was a bit more uh, consolidarity between uh, the reverb that I used on a lot of the drum sounds uh, just to make it sound a bit more cohesive. Um, and that's pretty much it for the drums. Uh, we're in B minor, so just kind of walking down the scale. Uh, the first is the sub. Pretty straightforward sound. Um, I think the original I was using Diva. Um, but you can get the same kind of sound with the 3X oscillator. Doesn't really matter where the sub does it. Um, and that's just a sawtooth and a triangle both at the same octave. Uh, there's a bit of detune going on in the second oscillator. And what's going on there? Just a EQ, take out some of the um, low mids and a limiter. So I use the kick as a side chain, uh, sent it to that channel and I think some of the pads as well, uh, just so the bass dips when the kick hits. Uh, make sure it doesn't get lost in the mix with the, the low frequencies. And then I've also got this bass here. So again, the original uh, was actually a sample I've been using for a while. Um, I'll just show you what it sounds like without the effects first. So EQ restricting the, the frequencies to low mids. And then I use Patcher uh, because there is quite a lot of stereo imaging going on in the original. Uh, so loaded up um, mid-side EQ, uh, sorry, mid-sides uh, by going like this. This is really useful tool actually. And presets and split band EQ. Move over. Fucking hell. Maybe not. At mid side, there we go. And then added a plugin, added an EQ, and then set the side EQ. Sorry. 
set the side compressor to an EQ and then had that back going around there and then took out all the low end. So all the frequencies in the sides, um, all the low frequencies in the side were taken away. So you're not left with a, a stereo image in the sub bases. And that's what was going on there. And then again, just a limiter and a filter. Um, if you want to create something with a 3x oscillator that sounds similar, it's basically a square wave uh, with detune to give it that stereo width. And also had um, two more, so a sawtooth and a triangle wave. And then just experimented with um, different pitches. So the middle one is uh, just set to zero, standard 12 o'clock. And then uh, the triangle wave is one octave. <clears throat> and that's what's going on there. So that's it for the bass. Um, now I've got these two here. So the first is a harmless. And that's really just there for like a transient uh, to layer up on top of the other bass. Uh, so you need to set the unison to two. Gives it that stereo image. And then I think everything else is pretty much uh, the default. I uh, just took the decay and release to around there and messed around with the pluck. Depends how much high frequency you want coming through. And then the other one is a square wave. So yeah, square wave, pretty much it. And then if you go to the filter envelope, looks like this, loads of uh, resonance, and that sets a SUF low pass, and you can mess around with the, the amount that the filter opens. And that's based off a couple of, uh, a couple of tracks uh, that I heard from Fred again. Um, and that kind of runs in the background uh, just to give it more energy. Cool, so that's it for all the bases. Uh, I'll just go into the pads now, see what we've got going on. So we've got kind of three layers to the pads. Um, the main one is this, and it's just a soft pad sound. So the melody here is kind of what brings the emotion to the track, I think. Um, just add in a few harmonies on top of the the bass notes that we've got already. Um, so yeah, just a soft pad sound. Um, the sample is uh, from an analog synth with a bit of reverb running through it. Um, so if you download, you can just use uh, this sample. And I uh, just edited the volume envelope like this, so slow attack and a bit of release as well. Um, it's quite nice because the original sample uh, already sounded pretty warm. Had a bit of like modulation to it as well, so it sounds uh, nice and analog-y. And yeah, just had a bit of EQ. Just taking, a light, taking out the, uh, the subs. And to layer that up, I use this one here. Pretty standard saw pad, and that's had high frequencies into the pad, um, so that on different sort of monitoring devices, it's easier to get that uh, harmonic content and a bit more high end. Um, so that was just a sawtooth uh, with a bit of detune, taken down an octave. Um, also plays, I think, slightly different notes from the the other pad there. Didn't even touch anything else on that. Uh, added up the phase uh, randomness to add uh, a bit more movement. Um, and we'll take a look at the mixer. So just a bit of compression 
again loads of uh, subtractive EQ taking out taking out all those low end frequencies and with the other nice blend of the two now this vocal bit here I uh, started off with these guys so these were oh just one vocal sample actually and then tuned that into the track by just taking it down um, a semitone because the original was in C minor as is a perfect fifth so if you just go up five semitones so that's now at plus four and then created like a little melody with them and it was a bit of messing around until it sounded good and then I consolidated that into uh, one sample and then I think I uh, just blurred it so you do that by going to um, Edison dragging in whatever sample it is so I would have recorded that uh, original piece together then if you hit Control b or Command b or whatever it uh, brings up this, go to accept and I'll create a nice blur. And this is really just here for a bit of uh, extra atmosphere. So uh, again, just slammed a compressor just to get, keep the volume light nice and consistent. Added a bit of chorus. Uh, and then this is just the preset with the trance gate. Gives it that uh, trancey vibe. We all know the one. And then EQ just to take out the low ends and control first set to white noise, which is one of the first two here. And that creates like a bit of a blur. Sweet. And yeah, that's just as a, an extra extra sort of atmosphere to add over the, the other um, harmonic content going on with the pads. And that's it for those. So here we got the lead. Took me a while to decide on this uh, rhythm. There's a whole bunch you could use. Um, I kind of stuck to a basic kind of syncopated rhythm. So you can see here, the first beat is here and then it's sort of the end and it sort of slowly jumps back and then added a bunch of variations into it uh, with these kind of uh, rolls here uh, which we hear a lot in um, quite a few Fred again uh, tracks um, this sort of stuff is this kind of experimenting around I think it took me hours to, to finally decide on this and then just kind of going up the scale seeing what notes work um, all the rolls are, the velocities are kind of around here, just so they're not too, uh, too in your face. Um, in terms of the sound itself, it may sound a little different from the example you heard in the start, um, and that's because I had a, a few third-party plugins uh, going on on the lead sound, which I took away just for sake of example. Um, when you download the project, it will just come with all the nat native stuff. Um, so for the sound itself, um, you can kind of mess around with different um, different waves, whatever floats your boat, different octaves and stuff like that. For this example, I had a square wave uh, with quite a bit of detune, um, some white noise, which is uh, quite important for the sound. Again, just adding that to your taste, and then uh, also add a square wave, the sawtooth, uh, on the second one, which has turned up quite a bit. Um, so really short uh, volume envelope, just to keep the the notes nice and tight, and then a bit of attack and pretty short uh, decay, which you can uh, sort of change with this to make it a bit uh, snappier. And now it's set to the SVF low pass. And then again, you can just experiment around with uh, opening the filter. Um, so the first thing I had in that was 
um, some distortion. So Destructor is a pretty good one because it's got all these presets, which is basically any distortion that you get in FL Studio, uh, you can just load up through this. Um, so that's the Harmore Classic. Adds a bit more grip and then adds the delay set to uh, four. Court notes, whatever. Wet taken down quite a bit. EQ. And reverb. And then it's up to you whether you want to add um, some chorus, maybe make it a bit wider or whatever, but uh, I thought that sounded good. Oh, thought that sounded kind of okay. And yeah, just automated the filter throughout the track. And this build up here, just uh, again, automated with the reverb. And then the uh, the volume and stuff as well, uh, just to add it, uh, kind of keep it below the the threshold of um, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, completely lost what I'm talking about here. Um, just go over this bit here. Um, when you've got different melodies going on, uh, sometimes a good idea to to make the the rhythm or the sound itself a bit more simpler so you don't get too many contrasting um, sounds going on and it can end up getting a bit messy. So with this bit, with the vocals, uh, what I do is just uh, create like a more simplistic kind of rhythm. So this is a straightforward kind of syncopated uh, beat going on here. So we'll just play that with the drums. And that way they kind of complement each other without getting in each other's way and sounding a bit messy. And then when the lead comes in by itself, uh, that's when it's the more sort of complex sound. It's got, it's, uh, it's more room to, to move around in the, in the track basically. Um, and that's it for the leads. All right, on to the vocals. Um, what to say about them? They took a long time, um, but I'll just uh, break it down by starting with the, the beginning of the track. Um, so this is the one you hear right in the intro. Let's give a bit more context. And that's just a micro sample of the, the main vocal I used. Just repeat in on the beats and that kind of bleeds in with the, the shakers. And it was really just there to, to kind of introduce the track. And then uh, here, this is made up of two different samples. Um, I think from the same singer, they sound a bit different in the recordings. Um, but again, just kind of chop them up until they fit it into a more cohesive kind of melody. And the other one, I think, was this one here. And what I did there was just kind of chop this up into individual pieces and put them, scattered them throughout the the main loop here until it sounded um, it sounded like it was better. Um, this little bit here is just uh, yeah, manually just creating like a little fill, and that brings in with the uh, the kick. Sounds pretty sweet. So that's the, the main sort of hook of the track, um, which sits quite nicely uh, beneath the melody. So when everything's going on, I just had that, that same sample here.
And then for this bit here, um, just had basically like a, a bigger extension of that same sample and also layered it up with a, a few bits here, which is just turned down a whole octave. And it's more of a smoother vocal. So, you know, this would be more sort of like a chorus um, if it was a real track. It can be quite difficult sometimes uh, when you're left with, um, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever vocals you can find. Uh, it's always something I struggle with quite a bit. So I get something that's there kind of melodically. The lyrical content doesn't really matter so much to me because um, I'm not a lyricist. I'm kind of just using uh, a whole bunch of stuff that I can find on Splice. If I think the, the lyrics themselves are a bit fucking cringy or whatever, um, then I kind of just take out those words and swap them in with something that uh, doesn't sound as bad. Uh, so here um, I've got another vocal sample bit as well. Because uh, the original bit I had uh, just didn't sound as good. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. So again, just kind of messing around with um, different rhythms and patterns until you sort of end up with something that you're, you're happy with. And uh, that's what was going on here. Uh, the later part of the track <clears throat> kind of used like this more dubby kind of uh, vocal, which I think sounds really good with the beat itself. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily something Fred again would use in one of his tracks. It's definitely more jungle, old school dub kind of uh, sample. Um, but yeah, I thought it sounded pretty sweet. So just kind of stuck with it. Uh, that's this one here. Um, and finally, just got this bridge in the middle. And again, that's just made up of a micro sample, sort of. And had quite a few effects going on that. So the first was uh, a distortion. Then a vocoder. Um, and that's to give it more of a robotic sound, which I think you can hear a bit better with this sample here. Pretty cool thing just to experiment with. Uh, a bit of flanger, some EQ, filter and reverb. And that's a good little chant just to have in the break of uh, the middle of the song here. Um, that's pretty much it for the vocals. Um, yeah, you'll get them with the project if you choose to download it. Um, just bear in mind that whatever key you have it in, um, it should say here. So this is A minor. So to get it up to B, let's say A's here, I just had to shift it up uh, two semitones, which is 200 cents, which you can see in the, the top left of the screen there. So that's it for the project. Um, as always, I'll leave uh, links in the description um, for where you can access it, uh, all the free VSTs that I used. Uh, if you do open the project, I think the only one that's not uh, native to FL Studio is the course, uh, which is free to download. So I'll leave a link for that um, in the bottom as well. Uh, thanks for coming along, showing your support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.